Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOAN Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. We have with us Secretary of State Chris Kobach, the 31st Kansas Secretary of State, a classmate of mine from law school, active and engaged on many fronts, fighting to preserve vote integrity, not just in Kansas, but across the country, fighting against the way of illegal aliens, supporting those that want to uphold the Constitution, and engaged also in other areas of legal importance, Chris, thanks for staying with us. We've got just a short segment. I want you to give us a brief here at the tail end on your ongoing cases involving the efforts to ensure that the law is applied with respect to illegal aliens. But first, let's talk a little bit about that homosexual marriage decision that issued on Friday. There has been increasing rhetoric online, given uh, the anger at least in some quarters, over what people see as a, a very illegitimate decision misapplication of the 14th Amendment. What say you about that decision? Do you think it, it's I, legitimate I think it or not? Is, I think it is one of the worst Supreme Court decisions of our lifetimes. Um, it is just as bad in terms of its social impact as Roe v. Wade, but it's even more poorly <laughs> reasoned. Roe v. Wade was a poorly reasoned opinion. Even if you were a liberal, you could admit that you know Roe v. Wade wasn't very well written. Well, this one's even worse because there's there's no precedent that it's sitting on. There's no interpretation of the words of the Constitution that it is resting upon. It's just Justice Kennedy and the other liberals uh, saying, we believe that the word liberty in the 14th Amendment Due Process Clause, we believe that it's actually a pregnant word, and it was planted in the Constitution in 1868 when that amendment was ratified, and we get to give birth in 2015 to whatever liberties we want to by just reading them all into that word. And it's 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 just bizarre. So the court just decided that there is now a new constitutional liberty, and that is the liberty to uh, have a gay marriage. And it, it's just amazing because it, the people in 1868 who wrote the 14th Amendment were not thinking about that. They were thinking about protecting the rights of the newly freed slaves uh, and, and ensuring racial equality before the law. They were not thinking about marriage. You don't find that word in our Constitution. They certainly weren't thinking about homosexuality. And the idea that five lawyers sitting on the Supreme Court have just created a new constitutional right and have taken that authority from we the people is, is really outrageous. I mean, we the people apparently don't matter anymore in the content of our Constitution. And it's, there are no parameters in, there are no parameters in, on action of the Supreme Court. I mean, the Constitution doesn't form the natural boundaries that it used to. I, you know, One of the other, I think, appropriate criticisms of that extension of the 14th Amendment is, and this is not a popular thing to say, and I'm not going to ask for your affirmance of it, but, you know, sodomy at the time was illegal, I think, in every state in the nation at the time the 14th Amendment was ratified. And it really does require this approach that we as justices have the right to basically extend and expand and interpret any way that we want. The Constitution is just kind of merely an inconvenience. And it does, I think, bell rule problems for the future of this country when you have a court that doesn't feel down in any way. I mean, it's, you know, I, I would hope that liberals would agree with us on this, but I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath. I mean, the Constitution is supposed to mean what we the people say it means by our Congress proposing amendments and, or, or our proposing convention and by the states ratifying. And it's lost that now. It's just whatever the justices decide to reinvent the words to mean. And, you know, it really was pretty striking because Justice Kennedy opened up new doors. You know, this was the, the first time that the court was basically saying, well, liberty doesn't really have any limits. We, if we find that a liberty is really important we, by a vote of five justices, we're going we're gonna to stick it in the Constitution. And, you know, what's really outrageous, Joe, is they are so eager to robustly defend these invented liberties, which are, were never included in the Constitution by we the people, but when it comes to a liberty that is actually written in the Constitution, like, oh, say, the right to keep and bear arms, they're dismissive of that liberty. And the liberal justices positively want to ignore it. They would rather uphold invented invisible liberties that aren't in the Constitution rather than the ones that are actually written in black and white. It's an activist court, and of course the downside of this, the big downside is of course not just the way that we're governed, but also in practical terms what this means to people of faith that want to continue to speak out on the issue of traditional marriage. What do you think the implications are of this decision in the long term to free exercise rights? Uh, I think it's, it's not good. Um, although the decision may not be used as a direct precedent uh, for infringing upon the rights of, of, of us, of people of faith, to speak freely, I think 
it'll be used as kind of supporting law when the next thing comes down the pike, which will be, you know, probably uh, an attack on the 501c3 status of churches that don't uh, affirm gay marriage. Um, you might see some attacks on free speech by, uh, you know, by members of the cloth, of, you know, of any faith. I don't know which is going to come first, but I think all of these things are now very real possibilities. Uh, moving forward, you'll see, you know, of course, one thing that I really cared about in this whole gay marriage dispute over the past decade is uh, adopted kids. You know, now we have a situation where um, gay couples are adopting on the same terms and, and must be allowed to adopt on the same legal terms as, as heterosexual couples. And, and, you know, that's certainly not good for the kids. So, uh, you know, so many things are going to be following from this. World Upside Down, during Father's Day, there was a, an ad that went viral that promoted by a major advertising agency in the United States where it portrayed a series of single mothers. And let me tell you, single moms have it hard and, and absolutely deserve our praise when they do it right and deserve our empathy. But uh, basically, we're celebrating Happy Father's Day to our moms. I mean, it's... It's a world upside down. Elites are trying to impose a different value system on this country. They've had a large degree of success, and they certainly have a willing hand in the Supreme Court in their efforts. I want to just turn briefly, we've only got about four or five minutes left in this segment, uh, to the ongoing efforts that you're having to fight the illegal alien scourge. You had a case that was pending in the Fifth Circuit. Could you tell our listeners where that's at and what you expect yeah. there? So what we're fighting against here is, is the Obama administration's lawless amnesty where Obama has essentially ordered ICE agents not to enforce the law against the so-called DREAMers, and then it got expanded last November to also include um, uh, parents of uh, U.S. citizens and parents of green card holders. Anyway, um, there are two cases. One that I'm the lead counsel in is representing the ICE agents who are trying to stop the first of the two amnesties. And the other case is the one brought by 26 states led by Texas, and that one is also in the Fifth Circuit. The um, interesting thing in both cases is that the position of the federal government is very, very weak. In other words, on the merits, it's quite clear that Obama has acted lawlessly and unconstitutionally. So the Department of Justice strategy has been to try to stop these cases by arguing that the plaintiffs don't have standing. And that's where the real battle has been in the courts. And so we had one panel of the Fifth Circuit say that the 26 states do have standing, we had another panel, a more liberal panel of the court, say that the ICE agents don't have standing. Um, and we're right now asking the court to review that matter en banc, where, where the entire Court of Appeals comes together and tries to reconcile that. So that's where those cases sit right now. But, you know, stay tuned. This battle is, is ongoing, and the Obama administration is going to continue to claw and fight to keep their amnesty in place. So what are you hearing on the ground? I mean, is it just a continued effort of the Obama administration to prevent ICE agents from doing their job? Is it still this kind of radical embrace of illegal aliens that's going on? And the reason why I ask this, there was recently an article that came out that suggested that the feds had, you know, by their six-month retention policy, allowed 5,000 illegal aliens that had felony records to be released on the streets in Arizona. Is this just leftover from earlier action, or is the Obama administration continuing their pro-illegal alien efforts? Oh, I think they're absolutely continuing it. Um, you know, they, they seem to be looking for every single means by which they can stretch or distort the law or, or find some loophole to allow illegal aliens to stay in the United States. And, you know, I, I represent these ICE agents, and, you know, what I hear from them is just unbelievable. We could fill an entire show of your program uh, talking about some of the stories I've heard, but that agency has the lowest morale of any agency in the federal government. And that's not surprising because they've been ordered not to do their jobs. They, you know, they, they started a career in law enforcement and they're being told by the feds, by their federal overlords, to break the law themselves and certainly don't enforce it against the illegal aliens. So I, I would assume that that's forcing a lot of people out of the agency, but there's still good folks, men and women, that are trying to do their jobs, right? Yeah, there are. There are a lot of great ones who are trying to do their jobs. I mean, you know, the, the ICE agents I represent as plaintiffs, they're, they're fighting to actually be able to do their job and enforce the law. Well, Chris, I appreciate your efforts in that regard. Keep us appraised of what's going on. Appreciate your insights that you shared with us on our show today. Keep up the good work. Secretary of State Chris Kobach doing the good Anytime. fight. All right. We appreciate it. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show. Back after these messages. 